Hello YouTube. Animals near Chernobyl in Ukraine acquire superpowers. The invulnerable appearance shocked scientists. We will look today at mutations of the Chernobyl animals. The 1986 Chernobyl accident or disaster resulted in one of the highest unintended emissions of radioactivity in history. The graphite moderator of reactor 4 was exposed to air and ignited, releasing columns of radioactive fallout on the territory of the present-day Belarus, Ukraine, Russia, and other parts of Europe. Although few people now live near Chernobyl, animals living in the immediate vicinity of the accident site allow us to study the effects of radiation and assess, assess recovery after the disaster. Most of the pets have moved out away from the accident, and those deformed farm animals that were born did not reproduce. After the first few years um, after the accident, scientists focused on research on wild animals and pets that were left behind to learn about the consequences of Chernobyl. Farm owners noticed an increase in genetic abnormalities in farm animals Immediately after the Chernobyl accident, in 1989 and 1990, the number of deformities increased again, possibly as a result of radiation released by the sarcophagus designed to isolate the nuclear core. In 1990, about 400 deformed animals were born. Most of the deformities were so severe that the animals lived for only a few hours. Examples of defects included facial malformations, additional appendages, abnormal coloring, and reduced size. Mutations of domestic animals were most common in cattle and pigs. In addition, cows exposed to radioactive fallout and receiving radioactive feed produced radioactive milk. The health of reproduction of animals near Chernobyl deteriorated at least during the first six months after the accident. Since then, plants and animals have recovered and largely rebuilt the region. Scientists collect information about animals by taking samples of radioactive manure and soil and observing animals using camera traps. You can find more details about the Chernobyl disaster in general and some very strange consequences in my other videos in that such playlist. The Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is a closed area covering more than 1,600 square miles around the accident site. The Exclusion Zone is a kind of radioactive wildlife sanctuary. Animals are radioactive because they eat radioactive food, so they can produce fewer cubs and produce mutated offspring. Despite this, some populations have grown. Ironically, the destructive effects of radiation inside this zone may be less than the threat posed by people outside it. Examples of animals in the area include the Przewalski horses, wolves, badgers, badgers, swans, moose, turtles, deer, foxes, beavers, wild boars, bison, minks, hares, otters, lynxes, eagles, Rodents, storks, bats, and owls, and pikes. Not all animals feel well in the exclusion zone. In particular, populations of invertebrates, including bees, butterflies, spiders, grasshoppers, and dragonflies, have declined. This is probably due to the fact that animals lay eggs in the topsoil, which contains high level of radioactivity. So expeditions of Western researchers regularly visit the exclusion zone of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. They observe the local flora and fauna, look at how radiation has affected the natural environment, and try to understand what happened to animals and plants that survived, in fact, a nuclear war. American scientists from the New York University were recently surprised by nematodes, tiny roundworms which they dug up in the abundance in the zone. Radiation does not harm these worms at all. They're neither, neither in a weak sense nor, nor strong. 
It's like the radiation is not around at all, but it is. That is, the worms have literally become invulnerable to radiation. The genes of the worms from Chernobyl turned out to be resistant to radiation. Biologists led by Sophia Tintori were looking for damage in the DNA of worms, which usually appear as a result of radiation exposure, and they did not find it. There were no traces of mutations in their genome. Scientists do not know how to explain the incredible resistance of nematodes, whose generations have been resisting radiation since 1986. Perhaps evolution played a role, and the worms somehow developed a superpower that helped them survive in an extremely mutagenic environment. Or are they naturally immune to the effects of ionized radiation? Or is radiation not as harmful as it is demonstrated to be or as it it is painted? Riddles all around. So biologists from Princeton University are also inclined to the evolutionary hypothesis. And um, you see, those scientists found that the immune system of Chernobyl um, wolves provides increased resistance to cancer by receiving an amount of radioactive radiation more than six times higher than the maximum safe level set for humans. That is, radiation is for their benefit, not harm. More than 37 years have passed since the Chernobyl tragedy, the largest disaster in the history of nuclear energy. Now the area around the station, which has been heavily contaminated with radionuclides, is a special exclusion zone, um, which I already mentioned. So in kilometers, it's about 2,600 square kilometers. In 1986, all people were evicted from there, over 350,000 people, um, of whom about 50,000 lived in this town of Pripyat. But this doesn't mean that life has stopped there. Scientists have been trying for decades to figure out how radiation exposure in Chernobyl affected wildlife. To do this, they study both flora and fauna. For example, the pines that were near the crash site died shortly after it, but other plants actively grew throughout the territory abandoned by people. The Chernobyl accident led to the contamination of almost the entire Europe with man-made radionuclides. In including more than 100,000 square kilometers of the territories of modern Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia. Despite the obvious negative effects, scientists use long-lived radioisotopes to study geological processes. Some animals also felt good after the disappearance of humans. At least wild boars and wolves were seen on the city streets, and the population of horses that escaped from the pens was gradually growing. At the same time, animals and birds with an increased level of mutations, smaller than those of their non-irradiated counterparts, are regularly caught in the exclusion zone. The life of such animals is shorter. However, it is not easy to single out the effects of low doses of radiation, among other factors, because many processes occur simultaneously in the natural environment that can affect these changes. In addition, animals and plants could receive positive mutations for them due to the fact that people left the infected area and the anthropogenic load has increased. So, in 2013, the international team of scientists, led by the evolutionary ecologist Timothy Musso, investigated Chernobyl birds, which managed to adapt to new conditions. Scientists compared birds caught in the areas with low and high radiation levels and found that the latter are in better condition. They have more antioxidants in their bodies, which help reduce the effect of radiation exposure. However, this affected only some species. In general, the effect of radiation on birds was rather negative. Until now, very little is known about how local dogs survived the disaster. There were mostly pets left by the owners during the evacuation. After the emergency at the nuclear power plant, the authorities initiated the shooting of Chernobyl dogs 
but many escaped this fate. Someone, um, some of them were fed by the liquidators of the accident, so to say. Some later by tourists who like to visit danger zones. Today, about, I the number is varies, but I think 250 dogs, 300 dogs live near the nuclear power plant. Hundreds of others have scattered around the exclusion zone. A few years ago, a group of scientists went to Pripyat together with animal rights activists from the Clean Futures Fund who vaccinated and sterilized stray animals. The researchers were led by the same Timothy Musso, who has been coming to Chernobyl regularly since 1999. Blood samples were taken from all the captured dogs, and there were about 300 of them to determine their DNA. All animals are descendants of survivors of the disaster. The dog study have complex family ties. Scientists counted 15 families in total. At the same time, those that live in the industrial zone of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant are genetically unlike those located further away from it. However, such differences may be related not only to the distance from the exploded reactor, but also to other factors. Future research will help clarify it. The researchers are confident that studying the DNA of dogs from the exclusion zone will help to understand in more detail how radiation affects human health in the long term. Um, this is important, among other things, things from the point of view of exploration of other planets, because during long-term flights into space, a person receives significant doses of radiation. Look at my videos about the effect of outer space radiation, and more on human beings. What happens to their psyche and mind? This is incredible because if we ever hope to venture into outer space, and I, I don't think this is going to happen personally with humans, but it's just my opinion. Anyway, we need to know how radiation will affect and change humans. That's important. Also, Spanish biologists from the University of Oviedo um, I think it was Department of Biology of Organizations and Systems, whose group was led by Herman Orizaola, discovered an unprecedented number of tree frogs of the unusual black color around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. These tailless amphibians, bright green by nature, literally became black in color. Frogmen, so to say, caught about 203 frogs of different shades of black in the swamps near Chernobyl. They found out that the darkest frogs live near the nuclear power plant. The closer you get, the darker it gets, so to say. Equally black were those frogs that lived in the places most affected by the 1986 disaster, heavily contaminated with radioactive substances released by the explosion. The three frogs changed their color by mutating. They have learned to produce melanin, a dark pigment. Mutated uh, three frogs turned black, escaping from radiation. Melanin is able to protect the skin, not only from ultraviolet radiation, but also from ionizing radiation. Um, having preserved and bred in the most infected places of the Chernobyl zone, the black frogs have demonstrated that their mutation is useful does not require any additional efforts to maintain it and increase the chances of survival and continuing their kind. Now I want to tell you something very interesting I get from Ukraine and hear from Ukraine. Um, the babki, or let's say old women, who live in Parishev, a village in a zone about seven kilometers from Chernobyl, say that wild boars have bred in great numbers they're enemies of vegetable gardens with potatoes that the uh, old women plant. And in winter, wolves drag dogs into the forest and moose come straight into the village. There are plenty, a great number, myriads of mushrooms and berries in the forest. And most importantly, there are huge pikes in the nearby Astritsa River, which uh, the old women sometimes catch. They're tough people, those old women. Look what they have gone through just in the last few years. So, 
this radiation, I guess this is important to know about the outer space. And I'm sure we'll hear more about the mutated animals of Chernobyl and uh, the strange animals that have been reported in the area as well. And I will tell you more as time goes by. If you like my research, please help me through the links you'll find in the description to this channel. Please tell others about my videos. Please like them. And thank you for all your attention to my work.